Virgin Galactic completes first commercial spaceflight. And here is all you need to know. Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll tell you all about this flight. So let's get started. Richard Branson, a British businessman, started Virgin Galactic in 2004. This means that the company has been around for almost 20 years. Virgin Galactic's rocket-powered plane, VSS Unity, took three paying customers and three staff members to the edge of space on Thursday. The ship will be launched into the atmosphere while still connected to a support plane called EVE. In the middle of the flight, it will separate from EVE and fire its rocket to fly almost straight up toward the edge of space. On Thursday, the plane hit its highest point, which was 279,000 feet which is about 53 miles or 85 kilometers. That is just a hair's breadth away from what U.S. authorities consider the beginning of space for airplanes, which is 50 miles away. However, it's a long way away from the Kármán line, which is about 62 miles away. After the rocket was turned off and the Unity hit its highest point in orbit, the crew had a few minutes of weightlessness before the spacecraft switched into re-entry mode and began its slow, controlled descent back to Earth. Almost an hour and a half passed during the trip. Unity landed successfully at New Mexico's Spaceport America, which is in an area that Virgin Galactic rents. Two soldiers from the Italian Air Force and an aerospace engineer were among the people who went on the trip. There were also three people from Virgin Galactic on board. Two of them took turns operating the vehicle. The Italian Air Force and the National Research Council paid for Colonel Walter Villadai to have a seat on the plane, so he could get some training before he went to the International Space Station to do a task. This was done in part because the Italian government gave them money. During the time that the passengers felt like they had no weight, an Italian flag could be seen being shown by Villadai on the live stream that the company set up for the journey. Even so, the crew was advertised as a scientific crew, not just a commercial crew, because the guests had professional ties to spaceflight and planned to do a lot of study while they were on board. Even though it was Virgin Galactic's first flight overall, the flight was important for the project because it was the first time it took people from other companies. Billionaire Richard Branson has more than 800 people on a waiting list for this kind of trip. Each of these customers has paid between $250,000 and $400,000 for the event. Branson himself took part in one of these flights in July of 2021 and he had planned to start daily commercial flights at the start of 2022. But a number of problems slowed down the process, including the fact that the project had to be put on hold for a while when Richard Branson's plane went off course. The company's present goal is to do one more test flight within the next month. After that, they want to start doing commercial launches every month. It says that it is working on a new plane that will be able to make the trip once a week. Jeff Bezos, who started Amazon, and Elon Musk, who runs SpaceX, are both trying to make money by giving the very rich a taste of spaceflight early in the 21st century. Bezos has criticized Virgin Galactic for not reaching the goal, saying that his own spaceship, Blue Origin, does reach the 62-mile Kármán line which is usually thought to be the beginning of space. In other words, Bezos thinks that his car is better than Virgin Galactic's. Also, Blue Origin has already done several trips with passengers, including a marketing stunt in which William Shatner, who played Captain Kirk on the Star Trek TV show, was sent into orbit. On the other hand, Elon Musk is getting ready to send the world's first space tourist back into orbit soon. In 2001, a U.S. financial banker named Dennis Tito, who used to be an engineer, paid $20 million for a seat on a Russian Suez spaceship with two cosmonauts. Tito said last October that he had made plans to be one of the first people to ride on Musk's Starship spaceship, which has not yet been launched into space and is still being built. This ship will take people on a trip around the moon 
Even though Musk hasn't said how much these tickets will cost, it's likely that they will be on the lower end of the price range compared to Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. A week before Thursday's successful flight, the death of the Titan submersible, which was taking rich tourists to see the remains of the Titanic at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, made the risks and benefits of so-called adventure tourism very clear. The space flight on Thursday happened a week after the Titan submersible exploded. Villadai says that there is nothing in between parabolic flights in an airplane and spending six months on the International Space Station when it comes to microgravity flight choices for the international community. He emphasized how important it was that Virgin Galactic could really help and really help us with this kind of study, and how much help they could really give. Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Galactic, started a company for space tourists in 2004. He is sure to have gotten his money's worth from the business. Before going public in 2019, Virgin Galactic had already spent more than a billion dollars building its system. But since the company started trading on the stock market, Richard Branson has sold most of his investment in it. He did this through his company, Virgin Investments. Because of the deals, he has made more than $1.4 billion. Also, Branson was able to realize his childhood dream of going to space in July 2021, when he was a passenger on the company's fourth test flight. Branson said that the trip to space would be the complete experience of a lifetime. He launched the rocket just nine days before another billionaire, Jeff Bezos, flew into space in a rocket that his company, Blue Origin, made. This trip was a success two years after the corporation's first test flight into space with a full crew on its VSS Unity rocket plane. The flight was about 75 minutes long. The successful flight is a turning point for Virgin Galactic Holdings Incorporated, which has been working on building its commercial service for almost 20 years, even though it has had many failures along the way. Welcome to space, astronauts! Virgin Galactic's Sarisha Bandla said during a live feed of the spaceship's launch. NASA and the United States Air Force both agree that a person is an astronaut if they have been at least 80 kilometers or 50 miles above the Earth's surface. The rocket-powered VSS Unity is launched from the mothership airplane, which takes off from a runway, climbs to a high altitude, and then speeds into space at almost three times the speed of sound before gliding back to Earth. The plane that Virgin Galactic calls the Mothership has two pilots and takes off from a runway. During Thursday's flight, people in the space plane's cabin were weightless for a few minutes and saw the curved surface of the planet for the first time. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel for more information. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching.